Welcome back. So we've been talking about the Fourier transform, how to process uh, audio signals and data signals, and at this point, we've been talking a lot about the spectrogram and the Gabor transform, which is somewhere between the information you have in a raw audio signal and its Fourier transform. Okay, so if I just had a time signal, uh, maybe of some, some audio signal, at some point in time, I would know exactly where I was in time, but I would not know exactly what the frequency content is at this moment in time. Okay, so I have really, really fine temporal information, but almost a ton of uncertainty in what the frequency content is at this point in time. Similarly, if I Fourier transform, I know at a particular uh, frequency, I know exactly what kind of power there is in this frequency. I know everything, lots and lots of frequency resolution, but I don't know at all at what point in time these frequencies were being played. So I have a lot of uncertainty about the time when these, uh, these frequency peaks occurred, okay? So here I have a lot of frequency uncertainty, here I have a lot of temporal uncertainty, and the spectrogram, this time frequency diagram is gonna give you kind of this balance of the two. It tells you what frequencies are active at instances of time. But this begs the question, uh, can I get arbitrarily high frequency resolution and temporal resolution? And the answer is no. In this spectrogram, there's a fundamental trade-off between how much resolution I have in frequency versus how much resolution I have in time. I can't get this much frequency resolution or this much temporal resolution in the spectrogram. There's always a trade-off. Um, and so that's really important, and it actually is related to a fundamental uh, property of Fourier transform pairs called the uncertainty principle. So you've probably seen this before, uh, for example, in quantum mechanics, the uncertainty uh, principle. And I think it's really interesting that this uncertainty principle from quantum mechanics actually is a property of Fourier transform pairs in general. So this is a property, anytime I Fourier transform data, there will be this, this fundamental uncertainty principle of how much I can resolve in time versus how much I can resolve in frequency. And so I'm gonna write down what this looks like uh, for the Fourier transform pair. So if I have um, some function of time, and I'm going to, actually I'm gonna make this a function of x because it's gonna be a little bit easier. I hope you're okay with, uh, with me making it a function of x, even though we're talking about audio signals. So if I have some function, and I compute its square weighted by x squared, and I integrate that over the entire domain, so this is integrated uh, from negative infinity to infinity, and this is essentially a moment of that function, this is like the second moment of this function uh, squared integrated. And if I multiply that, so this is some measure of my, my function in space, and if I multiply that by the same measure but of its Fourier transform, so here I'm gonna integrate from negative infinity to infinity of omega squared f hat of omega magnitude squared d omega, I'm gonna multiply that, this product is always greater than or equal to a certain small number. This is always greater than or equal to one over 16 pi squared. And this might not seem that profound at first. Okay, this is just a mathematical fact. You can derive this, this is true. But what this says is that if you try to localize where you are in space or in time, this could be space or time, whatever, if I think of F as a Gaussian that I'm trying to make tighter and tighter and tighter, okay, so if I wanna make this ultra tight in space so that I have a lot of resolution and I know exactly where I am in space, what that says is that this Gaussian, so the Fourier transform of a Gaussian is always another Gaussian. It says that for this to be true, for this product to always be greater than this number, this Gaussian has to be pretty spread out because th this product has to be bigger than that number. So the tighter I make my kind of peaked distribution in space, this is, I mean, this goes right to the, the, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, the, because 
uh, position and and momentum are are these these kind of these conjugate pairs, these transform pairs. The tighter my distribution uh, in one of these variables gets, the broader the distribution, the more uncertainty I have in my other variable. And vice versa, if I have an extremely localized estimate of my frequency, if I have a really peaked delta function, I know exactly what frequency is active, then I don't know as much where it occurred in space or time. So let, let, let's think of this actually as a time variable in this analogy here. In this picture, I know exactly where I'm at in time, but I know almost nothing about what my frequency content is. Here, I know exactly where I am in frequency. I know exactly what my frequency content is, but I don't know where it occurred in time. I have kind of maximal uncertainty in time. And this spectrogram is kind of the best balance of the two. It's the balance where they're both kind of you know, not too skinny, not too fat. They're both balanced in this, this time frequency. So I still have uncertainty in time. I still have uncertainty in frequency, but they're not kind of maximally skewed like in these two pictures here. Okay, so I mean, I'm going over this really fast. This is a very glossy kind of uh, shallow treatment of an extremely profound property of Fourier transform pairs. You always have this duality, this kind of uncertainty principle. If I have really, really, really fine peaked information about my spatial distribution, I have uncertainty inherently in the Fourier transform and vice versa because of this uncertainty principle. This is um, essentially the mathematical underpinnings of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, and this comes up all over the place, not just in quantum mechanics, but in signal processing uh, all across the board. You have to be thinking about kind of what your uncertainty limits are because there are fundamental mathematical limits uh, on how much you can measure these two quantities simultaneously. Okay, thank you.